you are good and your mercy endureth forever. So Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. So Lord, you are good, yes. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good, yes. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, people, say, people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. Up. Come on.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Night 21. Give it up for night 21. <laughs> Woo, anybody been being blessed thus far? God has been powerful. It's been awesome. Amen. Amen. Minister LJ on tonight. Amen. Excited about the word coming for her. I mean, she do a whole lot around here and still had the, the time to get a word from the Lord. And had a birthday too. I mean, we ought to be excited about what God's going to say on tonight. She studied to show herself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but that she rightly devised the word of truth in the midst of still being diligent to our bishop. Amen. And her own life. Amen. We need to take that in consideration when people come up here. Amen. They're not just coming up here dancing around. They've had to toil. Amen. They'd have to sow into this thing. This ain't nothing that's just given. Amen. They had to suffer a little bit to get that word. Amen. It hurts a little bit to get that word because it's coming to us first. Amen. Amen. Just go and give God a hand clap for Minister LJ and her diligence, amen. We ain't got but one announcement, amen, and that's we need candy, 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 candy. Money, money, money. We want our children to have a good time, amen. Even if you ain't got no children, you got grandchildren, and anyway, it take a whole village to raise our babies anyway. So just sow into the cause, amen. Give it up for TJ, amen. We definitely get to see him once a year, hopefully more often, Minister TJ. Bless you, you know, you will have an anointing. We love you, we love you. <laughs> we just gonna go before the throne, amen. Father God, we magnify you on this day. Lord, we lift our hands as an evening sacrifice unto you, God. We thank you for what you're going to do, God. We thank you for what you've already done, O oh God. We thank you for your handmaiden on this evening. Let it be unto her as thou hast said, O oh God. Stir up the gifts of living water that reside in her belly, God. Let her operate in the overflow. Press out the ointing, the ointment, O oh God, that our lives might forever be changed, O oh God. Bless her and enlarge her coast, God, even right now, God. Whatever you want to say, God, say it through your oracle on tonight. Satan, we declare that the Lord rebuke you. We come against distraction and anything that's not like God, we pull it down right now in the name of Jesus. We bring our focus and obedience into the word of God on tonight, that our lives might forever be changed. God, teach us to apply this word to our lives, oh God. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers of the word, oh God. Activate something new in us on tonight, God. Let it be refreshed, God. Bless this worship ministry, oh God, to break up any foul ground before the woman of God comes. We declare that this act Atmosphere is conducive for you to move. Rest, rule, and abide in this place. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Somebody give him glory. Hallelujah. Now, without clapping, just give thanks to God. Without clapping. Without clapping, just without clapping. The song says, You are our Father. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be. Sing, Danica. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. Thank you. 
Let's all sing it in the house. You are Alpha C. You are Alpha. Why we sing, we give you, we 
all sing, we give you. Now let's all close it out together. We can do. church say amen God has spoken so let the church say amen come on let's all sing it together let the church let the church say amen let the church say amen God has spoken, so let the church say amen. Has God spoken to anybody during this fast? Come on, let the church say amen. Let the, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church Amen. Just one more time. Let the church say amen. Let, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. As we come for communion, God, God has spoken. spoken. So let the church say amen. God spoke to anybody in this place. Oh, God, God has, has spoken. spoken. So let the church say amen. One more time. If he's spoken to you, just wave your hand and say, God has spoken. So let the church, let the church say amen. Now give him a praise in here. playing is more appropriate for tonight because I want to do communion a little differently than before because as partakers we are believing the attributes that are given unto us are we really accepting consuming manifesting what Jesus was or is or is to come are we faking the funk have you really exercised the contact with others like Jesus did in the Bible? For example, a liberating touch. Mark 7, 33 and 35 says, And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And straightway his ears was open. And the string of his tongue was loose and he spake plainly. Are we illuminating touch? Matthew 9, 29 to 30. Then touch he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes was open. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. A quiet or cleansing touch. Matthew 8:15. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Or do you have that healing touch? 
Luke 22, 51. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye this far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. You may partake of the elements. I will be announcing over you promise of ultimate triumph that he has given us over evil influences of men. Psalms 44 and 5. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name will tread them under that rise up against us. The malign spiritual forces. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread over scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Severus afflictions. Romans 8, 35 and 37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. All satanic powers. Revelation 15, 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had given the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Do you have that touch? Do you have that ultimate power that God given you? Do you believe it? Do you receive it? Do you know it? Do you believe in his divine protection that he had? Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Whatever I need to do. Or do you believe or have faith in rewards that are bestowed upon you? Revelations 2 and 7. He given us the spiritual food. Revelations 2 and 17. He given us a new name. Revelations 2, 26, giving us authority. Revelations 3 and 5, giving us robes of righteousness. Revelations 3 and 5 again, giving us enthronement or even spiritual vision. Looking heavenward. Acts 7, 55 says that. I believe that God is calling for us to be where he is. He wants us to believe. Do you believe? John 5 24 says verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life so I believe with this communion that we are passed from death unto life you don't know the significance God have in your life Sometimes we take him for granted. We don't even know how big he is. He created a universe, and we yet not have gone to Pluto, and there's other universes beyond that. There's, there's animals that we still discovering to this day. He told Job, even in Leviathan you will not see, because it's in the depths of the sea that we can't even go to. Sometimes we just take him for granted. We break the bread that he has given himself on the cross for, that he broke his skin, stabbed in the side. Let's eat. drink of his blood that is healing efficacious blood I charge thee let this communion be a be your spiritual cleansing of yourself to become more like him revelations 1 5 through 6 says and from Jesus Christ who is, faith, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory, dominion 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you today, dear God, to cleanse us, oh God. That we come more like you right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus that we pray. We love you. We glorify you. We honor you. We say right now that we commend ourselves to you. We give ourselves the way to you. You indescribable unto us. You are amazing unto us. We take you for granted, oh God. We repent for that. We say we're sorry, oh God. We adore you. Our hearts are turned towards you. Our minds are turned towards you, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for keeping us for another day. For supplying for us, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. She talked about drawing closer to God tonight and really coming into his presence, reverencing his presence and walking in relationship with him, not going through the rituals and traditions, but really having relationship and being near him where we can hear his voice and answer. He said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So in order to know his voice, we have to have relationship. We have to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. We have to know him, walk daily with him, take up our cross daily, crucify our flesh daily. That's all a part of walking with him. So our desire tonight, God, draw us a little bit closer. How many want to go? God, I just want to be a little bit closer, God. I'm not close enough yet. I want to feel you. Jesus, I need you. I'm longing for you. Thank you, Jesus. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. Just to hear you say that I'm your friend. For you are my desire. No one else will do. No one else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Lord, help me find the way. Bring me back to you. tonight say draw me close close to you never let me go
This is the air I breathe. Hallelujah. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. Every day I need you, Jesus. Oh, this is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me.
to thee. Anybody came with your cup out? This evening we come to, to thee. Did anybody bring your problems? Did anybody bring your cares? Did anybody bring your wallet and say, I come to, to thee? Even when you don't feel like it, if you got to come dragging one leg, if you got to come dragging that problem, this evening we come to Now this last time, let's all make it personal. And let's say I come to, to thee. If you got to look up to him, look up to him with your hands up in the air and tell him, Jesus, tonight I, I come. on your presence Jesus I don't mind waiting on your presence Jesus I come to to thee just one more let's just wave to God and say God it's me let's say God it's me God it's me God it's me standing in the need of a blessing God it's me standing in need of a miracle God, it's me standing in the gap for my children. God, it's me standing in the gap for my finances. I come to, to thee. Now everybody give God a hand praise in this place. Give God a praise. He 
he's worthy. Amen. God is worthy, and I'm, I'm going to try not to sweat. Amen. But I sweat real easy, so if I stand still, I might be all right. Bless the name of Jesus. We serve a great God. <laughs> we serve a great God. And he's worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. And I just love him. I, I, I just love him so much. Because, <laughs> you know, every now and then, I, I can get a little crazy. But in spite of all that, he's faithful. <laughs> he is faithful. And I know I'm not crazy by myself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. How y'all doing? Amen. It's a Monday night, and we had church the whole weekend, lots of times over the weekend, didn't we? <laughs> Woo! It's a Monday night! <laughs> Hallelujah! And God has kept us throughout this day. I did go to work today. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Troy. That's TJ's little brother. I don't want to call him little brother because he grown now, but that's his brother and uh, amen. Bless the Lord for him. <laughs> TJ and friends. where they go? Did they leave too? Oh, they left? They gone? Amen. Amen. If y'all hear him, he's over here coughing. Oh, you, you back there? Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Mr. TJ is not feeling good this evening. But y'all wouldn't have known that if I hadn't told y'all that, had you? Amen. We serve the kind of God who comes through when we least expect it. But faith, have faith. Amen. To the bishop of this house. To the bishop of this house. Amen. Glory to God. We bless God for him. He is a good daddy because you know we. Who we? We some. We something else. I'm going to leave it like that. We something else. <laughs> Whoo, Jesus. Y'all, I'm trying to calm down. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to allow the Lord to. To. Uh, manifest himself at this moment. Father God, we thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you, Lord God, that you are wonderful, that you are glorious, that you are marvelous. There's nobody like you. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy towards us. We thank you, Lord, that you even call us friends. I pray, Father God, that you will abase as I will abase as you abound. Have your way in this service, Lord God. Let me speak what you've spoken to me. I thank you, Lord God, that you've Deal with me one on one. I praise you tonight. I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I um was trying to, you know, we heard we've we've heard a lot of word over the last 21 days and uh, even on a couple of days, we heard the word two or three times. Uh, Pastor Brown yesterday reminded us about the word. And we know that because we love the Lord, 
that the word is sure. Amen. The word is an anchor. But I, 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 I didn't want. I didn't want to be too serious. But I feel like I'm being so serious. You know, I, I, I love God, and I understand how good He's been to me. And I'm trying to, you know, stay right here so I won't sweat. But I thought about when I was little. We used to play a game called tag. Any, anybody remember that game? Game called tag. And I can remember putting a lot of effort into running away from the it. Did y'all remember that? Did you, you were running from, and God put something in my spirit, and he said, you're it. I said, help me, Lord. I don't want to be it. You know, who in their right mind want to be chasing after somebody, just running and trying to catch somebody so that you can stop being the it? You know, and the probability of you being the it again doesn't exist, especially if, if quite a few people are playing. But God said, uh, you steal it. <laughs> I said, amen. All right, let's see where we're going with this it thing. So God, I appreciate you. Because in the game of tag, you're actually being mobilized. Whether you're the it or you're running from the it, you're moving. Amen? I don't necessarily need to define that mobilization. I don't need to define it. We done heard it. You know, a call to do something. So it's not a something that you sit down on. It's a something that you get up and do. Amen? As I pondered what really happens in the game, I began to draw analogies between us and God. It's through our actions. It's our lackadaisical attitude whether physical or verbal, we don't want to be the it. But he has called us to be it for this appointed time and place. He is calling for a total mobilization of the saints because there is a great work that needs to be done. The game of tag isn't difficult. You know, you got a, a, a perpetrator and you got some folk that are running. But if we're honest, we can admit that if our intended prey, especially if we were the it, were faster than us, we'd be chasing for a while. And in a minute, you could even say we might be a little tired. Uh, so, how many of you ever, you know, played a game, and I'm trying not to slide down off this pulpit, amen, it's still a little slippery, and I'm trying to look cool, <laughs> amen, y'all help me look cool, <laughs> tell me to be still, but if we are playing a game, and it really doesn't matter what game we're playing, Sometimes we change the rules in the middle of the playing the game, right? You know, we didn't like the way somebody played something and it was against us. We would probably said that's not right. You know, that's not fair. <laughs> As kids, I remember doing that quite a bit. Uh-uh, that's not how we played it. That's, that's uh-uh, I'm not to it. You didn't touch me twice. <laughs> Y'all, we make rules up as we go. And even as adults, we do the same thing. God, I hear you calling me. I do. Bishop will say, how many of you heard God? When's the last time you heard from God? We raise our hand. And what did God say? Now, God done told us exactly what he desires for us. But did we hear it? Did we hear, is that what God really said? That's what, you know, we even ask God, you sure? 
You sure that's what you? <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it has no personality, right? So it's, it, it's kind of rude. I think I can recall being taught that if you call somebody an it, really you, you were calling them a thing. So that was a little rude. And So how do you combine this it thing? How do you make this it thing make sense to what it is that God has called us to do? Well, if we're not it, we're in trouble. If we're not it, the world's in trouble. How do we impress upon a dying world that we serve a God who's able? Unless we're it. Unless we're the it that's actually going out and showing the love of Christ to somebody who may not know him. Just for a while, I just want to talk to you about this game of tag and it and you know running and who's God calling to be it as we are in the midst of revival mobilized to manifest in order to manifest you've got to know that you're it so let's clear with the misconception God desires us he desires to have us but he's not going to chase us down and force us to be it. That's the reality. That's the God we serve. Our omnipotent God is just waiting for us to realize we're nothing without him. He's omnipresent, and even in all of our doing, he sees everything we do. That's a little scary, ain't it? When you think about it. When we do stuff, do we really think about God seeing us? Sometimes I don't. I don't think about it till after it's over and then I be all pitiful and repenting and forgive me, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> don't kill me. Let me get it right. Amen? I know I'm not the only one. But, you know, if there's any of y'all out there, see me after service. I'm, you need to tell me what I need to do. We serve a God who's not hiding in the closet. He's not hiding behind a cloud. He's not going to jump off the balcony and say, boo, you're it. It's not going to happen. If you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, you are it. When you're it, don't get offended. Because you're it, it's a good thing. Instead, walk proud as the it. You know, put your shoulders up, stick your chest out, hold your head up. I'm it, yeah. Say what attitude, Terry. Our church's mission states, arming trained servants with the weapons of our warfare for the purpose of a lifestyle of kingdom excellence, kingdom power, and kingdom service. We, living as a true church, avail ourselves to Almighty God to be global agents for spiritual and economic empowerment for the disadvantaged. We are the light in darkness and the vehicle of hope for the brokenhearted. We are the church. Now, for those of you who forgot that was our mission, that was your refresher 101. Amen? So we got work to do. According to 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, it's through the foolishness of preaching that men are saved. It's through the foolishness 
of preaching. If it wasn't people like our bishop who gets up here and gets excited and starts screaming and hollering so we can get it, <laughs> it's through that foolishness that we win some for Christ. Amen? Some of us, you know, we, we, we got, you know, all kind of little cute sayings and, you know, some people, you know, when they see me, I'll be the only Bible that they'll ever read. It's true. For some people, it's the only sermon that they may ever hear. My life, under a spotlight, because I say I love the Lord. Amen? John 15 and 16 reads, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Amen? Amen. Y'all should have been clapping on that. Y'all should have been clapping on that. He's chosen you. You didn't choose him because if you had to choose God, you know he'd be over in a box in the corner with some dust on it if we had to choose God. Whatever we ask the Father in Jesus' name, according to his purpose and his will for our lives, he'll give it to us. And that's relationship. So somewhere, supposed to be on a daily basis, we're supposed to be developing this marvelous relationship between us and God. So that when he does begin to speak to us, that we do hear him and we stop ignoring him. And when he tells us turn left and we turn right and we get in trouble, we, you know, we understand. It's God that's speaking to us. It's God who's, who, who's di diverting our path and, and, and giving us a way of escape. Although I've emphasized the it, my application is also on the tag. To tag Something means to label. When we become saved, we're usually labeled. You know, I don't know about you, but I had some folks ask me who I thought I was. You know, and, and you know, you think you all that. And yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 8, 17. New Living Translation says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Now that's a clap right there. We are heirs of his glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. But I've determined that if I've got to suffer I'd rather suffer with him. Amen? Trying to suffer this thing by yourself? Oh, we. Mm. That's a mm, 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 mm. Amen. Ticket. Now we're talking about a tag. When you want admission into certain places, you need to have a ticket. But when you have favor with God, your ticket may be waiting at the door. It may be free, maybe discounted, or even upgraded. Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen? I've had a label, I might have a ticket, but I got a badge. When you're someone important, you usually, you know, you got a badge, got your picture on it, got your name on it, might have some other information on it. And it's like the police <laughs> or the FBI. You know, when they flash it, 
you know, we stop. We, we stop in that moment. That's somebody important. But you've been tagged. You're somebody important. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 3.12 says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. In the message, it reads this way. All this is proceeding along lines planned all along by God and then executed in Christ Jesus. When we trust in him, we're free to say whatever needs to be said. <laughs> Bold to go wherever we need to go. So don't let any present trouble on your behalf get you down. Be proud. Amen? When you're tagged, you might be marked. When you're a threat to something or someone, you know, we've, we've heard that term before. You're a marked man. You know, I'm looking at the Westerns, I'm going back, looking at the black and white Westerns, gun smoke. High chaparral. Uh-oh. Going back too far. I just, I was watching those on, you know, AMC the other day. <laughs> As we are a threat to Satan's kingdom, we're like Joseph. And we all remember the story of Joseph. Genesis 20, 50 and 20 says, As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Amen? Amen. To bring about us, to bring about many people so that they can be kept alive. Amen? Amen. Tab. You might, you might be a tab. <laughs> But not that kind of tab. When you know someone who trusts who you are, in other words, you got clout. Amen? You can put it on your tab. But it's even better when someone else will put your charges on their tab. Amen? It's even better when somebody else will allow you to put your debts on their tab. Ephesians 1 and 7 says it like this. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you go out, you, you, you might... Be admitted, you got a ticket, but it has a two-part thing, and they'll give you a stub. So just in case, you might have to walk out, but you can get back in. Amen? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's an incredible promise. God forgives his children when they sin, if only they come to him with an attitude of repentance and ask to be forgiven. God's grace is so great that it can cleanse the sinner from his sin so that he becomes a child of God. Even when we stumble, we can still be forgiven. Right. Amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah 50 and 12. He will raise a flag among the nations and assemble the exiles of Israel. He will gather the scattered people of Judah from the ends of the earth. So Tab might just be a flag. And we know a flag usually gets your attention. 
if we're mobilizing for manifestation, who we are should be reflective of who God is. Who we are should be reflective of who God is. We may not be a flag pole, but we are the flag on the pole. Amen? Waving, getting folks' attention. Now, it could be good, bad, or indifferent, but my charge tonight is that we want to wave and get folks' attention because we know a God that can set them free. The flag symbolizes victory, identification, and one in authority. Now that you have a better understanding of tag, look at your neighbor and tell him, yes, you've been tagged, and yes, you're it. I found it interesting that there are different kinds of mobilizations. As I've spent the last 28 years um, in a military environment, so mobilization is an, a new word for me. But I didn't realize that there were different types of mobilizations that occur. And um, when I read them, I, I, I likened it to how we operate in the church. Mobilization is the act of assembling reserve forces for active duty in times of war or national emergency. Generally, the type and degree of emergency determines the level of mo mobilization. Regardless of level, recall procedures and phases of mobilization remain the same. So whether we, you and me, whether we're going through or just riding on the way, whether we're going through or riding on the waves, our level of response to God should be the same. We should be able to praise him in the good times as well as the bad times. Putting that praise on layaway is a good idea. When it comes to this kind of mobilization, the governor of each state can mobilize forces. Selective mobilization responds to natural disasters or civilian disturbances that do not threaten national security. Examples of a domestic emergency that might require a selective mobilization would be a postal strike or an earthquake, tornado, that kind of thing. Liken to us. If we don't have any elders in the house, the ministers might have to pray. Amen? Amen. But all of us should be able to pray. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Partial mobilization occurs when the president mobilizes forces in response to external threats to national security for no longer than 24 months. So we're talking two years. In politics, I had to go back and, and, and try to relate this to, to something that we could envision and understand. Bush looked for bin Laden for years. <laughs> September 11th will always be a memorial for this country. That incident happened in 2001, and it's infamously called 911. It's one of the greatest massacres of US citizens. It ranks fourth in the history of the United States. President Bush served from 2001 to 2009.
President Obama was elected into office and he was installed in 2009, he's still there. Bin Laden was killed May 2nd, 2011. Who was the president? <laughs> Current president, two years. Quick response. The kind of response that we're supposed to have. Not necessarily in a national disaster, but a quick response when one of our sisters or one of our brothers is in need. A quick response. When you hear something is wrong, you don't wait and say, I'm gonna sit back and see who's gonna handle that. I'm gonna I'm let. You know, so-and-so usually handle that. I'm going to let them. But we're supposed to have a quick response. Full mobilization occurs when Congress mobilizes all reserve units in response to declaration of war or national emergency. Mobilization can last for the duration of the emergency plus six months to meet the requirements of a war or other national emergency involving an external threat to the national security. If you're not on the front line, your responsibility is even greater. How's that? I know some of you looking at me like, why, why? I don't sit on the front row. I just come to church to serve. <laughs> I say amen when the preacher preach. <laughs> I sing in the choir from out there. Matthew 20, 16, the message version. Here it is again, the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last, and the last first to drink from the cup. You know, you first, <laughs> in line, you probably be the first to get shot. <laughs> Amen? The attack comes to the first that they see. That's right. I, is that true? <laughs> makes sense, don't it? I mean, I know we're not military, but that makes sense. If you're going to shoot somebody, you're going to shoot over the crowd, or you're going to shoot what you know you can hit. Well, for me, I'm going to shoot what I know I can hit. So that's those that are real close to me, because I'm nearsighted. So me trying to see way back there, I'm going to be in trouble. So don't you dare think that because you don't sit on the front row, don't you dare think that I don't get to pray. Don't you dare think that because I'm not in a certain position, I'm not important. The body of Christ desires to have all of its members working together in unity. That's what we've been talking about. Being unified in Christ. Being together in times of trouble. Coming together to support each other. Coming together when the need arises. Coming together. After reading those different types of mobilization, I understand why God is calling us for total mobilization because there is spiritual warfare going on. So don't think for a second that Satan is going to sit back and let you get yourself together before he attacks. It won't happen. Satan don't play fair. He's not going to say tag you're it. <laughs> you be on the ground <laughs> you be immobile you can't get up and he's going to say ha, I'm it <laughs> got you even in the moment that I desire to do the right thing Satan rears his ugly head but I'm determined because I know that he is a liar I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. 
I'm ready for battle. And I can't wait until next week to get my war clothes on. Every time I step out of the house, that Minister K said, do I have my protection? Do I have it with me? I don't know if you're talking about a Glock or some other stuff or some other stuff. Amen? Amen. Like Paul, I'm trying to do this thing right. I'm trying to go the right way. I'm trying to say and do the right things. I'm really trying. And it seems like the harder I try, I end up falling. But grace be unto God who's able to keep me. Grace be to God who's able to lift me. Grace be unto God. Amen. You know, I, 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 I got my own dreams. I got my own aspirations. And I know I'm supposed to be letting them go. I'm supposed to desire more of God. I'm supposed to desire more of him. You know, like the song, you know, we sing the song, I'm chasing after you. I'm saying, say, I'm chasing after you. you. Play that for me. I'm chasing after you. Play it right quick. You just give me a quick chorus. We know that. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. Cause Jesus, I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing. I need you more and more. But this is what we're doing. I'll come chasing after you After I've done what I wanted to do I don't need you right now Right now That's us! You know, we'll tell God in a minute You, you know, you can sit down on this one I got Amen Because I do it I tell him I got, I got the, Oh yeah I got this. What attitude? I got this. Don't have nothing. More frustrated when it's over. Amen? You been there? Thought you was going to tell somebody something? Don't give somebody a piece of your mind? Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly what you did. You gave them a piece of your mind. So you're less a piece of your mind. For me, there are some things I'm not chasing anymore. I'm not chasing money. I'm not chasing careers. I'm not chasing men. I'm not chasing cars. I'm not chasing houses. I'm not chasing this or that. I'm chasing after God. I want to be like David in Acts 13, 22. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. So as I close tonight, I know some of you may be saying, you know, I still don't know if I'm it. I don't know if I really want to be it. But I tell you that you're it if you know him as Jehovah Jireh, your provider. If you know him as Jehovah Nisi, your banner, your victory. If you know him as Jehovah Rapha, your healer, you're it. If you know him as your lawyer in the courtroom, you're it. If you know him as Jehovah Mekadeshkum, your sanctifier, you're it. If you know him as Jehovah Rohi, Lord your shepherd, you're it. If you know him as Jehovah Sidkanu, 
your righteousness, you're it. If you know him as Jehovah Shalom, my peace, your peace, you're it. We've got to stop chasing after vanity and begin chasing after God with our whole hearts. God sent Jesus to be the it that we would aspire to be. He's tagged you and there's no turning back. Look at your neighbor one more time and declare to them, tag you're it on purpose. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Tag your it. <laughs> I'm chasing after you.